Um, Councillor Shelley Carroll has been a councillor for Ward 33 Don Valley East since 2003. She has served four years as Toronto's youth advocate as well as the budget chief, managing the city's $9.2 billion budget. Shelley is currently vice chair of the Economic Development Committee. She's also a member of the board of directors for the Toronto Fashion Incubator, Design Exchange, Food Share, Toronto Arts Council, Toronto Centre for the Arts, Toronto Atmospheric Fund, and Toronto Hydro. Shelley is committed to creating the sustainable city. Hers is a more inclusive and equitable city. Economically and fiscally sound, environmentally viable, and able to provide good health and wealth to Torontonians of any, every generation, including youth, in every corner of the city. Shelley has been a huge supporter of the City of Council again since the beginning. Um, she's uh, actually the reason why we uh, have the space in Council Chambers and, uh, and here today. Um, and uh, so we thank her for that. And without further ado, Shelley. Tyler's playing that up way too much. You, you could have called any one of the 44 councillors and, and right now in the City of Toronto, if, if youth want to gather anywhere and engage in any way, the, the answer would be yes, I will fill out that form. Uh, so, so you're in a new environment than, than you were perhaps when uh, the CYC was first sort of going through its forming stages and discussing. People really want this to happen now. In any engagement point we can, we can get going is a very important uh, uh, gathering as far as we're concerned, all of council at this point in time. So before I speak, let, let, I need to know a little bit about you, but this is a good exercise for you. If you want to get involved, whether on the outside, as Kristen says, if you're going to be activists, uh, you're going to be advocates, or if you're going to go inside, you're going to be a political staffer, you're going to be a politician, you've got to get used to showing who you are. I can, I can link back to, to Kristen's uh, uh, speech in a million ways. She's talking about when she was assembling a team, and once elected, you're assembling a staff, and you're picking the people who you know are going to reflect your values and, and help you get them out there. So you should not hesitate for one second to raise your hand. So, so who does go downtown on a regular basis? A, a couple of you smiled. So you do go downtown on a regular basis, but who lives in the suburbs? <laughs> so we got a lot of range. So we travel around the city. So if you're here for one thing in your ward that you want to fix, that's great. That's, that's the kind of meetings that, that I have in my ward most often. Most often it's people who are coming because there's one thing in this ward and I'm mad about it and I'm going to be all the council. But you all put up your hands. You all travel the whole city. So the whole city matters. The whole city matters. You, you, you might go down and you might get enough members together to fill that whole seating plan down there. And somebody could sit there for each ward. But, you know, when I'm talking to, to my constituents who've come and who've said, we've got to fix this flooding problem, we have to fix it on my street right here at the end of my driveway. But what if fixing, uh, uh, fixing a, a, a pond in the ward south of mine, Councilor Minowong's area, actually solves your problem? It's not the foot of your driveway, and are going to spend the money right in front of your house. But it is going to, over time, have an impact on you. It is going to affect your, the value of your property. It is going to affect your life if you're not having to dig your way out of a, a, a flood crisis. So let's all be global about it. Let's, let's call our globe the city of Toronto and its city limits. And now, now the conversations start to change. So how many of you are getting involved with the, with the, the CYC because you do fancy a career in politics. To be honest, put up your hand if, it, if, if, that's the, if that's the case. Do you want to be the candidate or do you want to be the, the, uh, the kingmaker? Do you want to be the staffer? Who wants, to, be, who wants to, to explore city staff? Who wants to be the media that covers it? It's a big possibility. Who wants to, uh, who wants to be the, the person in public affairs who goes around putting together the projects that the, that the councillors might do? There's one that very few people know about, and yet you guys know about it. You'll hear about it in post-secondary all over the place, and it's a huge part of politics, whether we like it or not. And some people do it really uh, in an upstanding way, or dar downright uh, squeaky clean about it, and some are not, and you've got to know which is which. Um, and who wants to be the candidate to the end? Who's thinking, I'd like to explore the whole field? Well, one day it might be, it might be running for office. So you're all open to that idea. But there are a million and one ways in. Million and one ways. 
and everything you're doing right now leads to it. Where do you get your news? Uh, uh, where do you get your news? Uh, hard copy or online? Hard copy. Where, where do you get your news? All of them? What's your favorite? Online or, or hard copy? Who's, who, who's, who's just online? Okay. Lots of people. Who reads blogs? Which ones? How do you know which ones? Who gets their news by just sitting in a Starbucks with uh, with friends talking about uh, what did you read? What did you read? What should I read? <laughs> oh, I, I just uh, I just revealed my my brand loyalty. Who gets their their news from sitting at a table somewhere in a retail establishment where they may have purchased a beverage? Okay, you guys are brave and you are ready for politics because you put up your hands. Come on, guys. Every one of you has conversations. Every one of you has conversations somewhere. Maybe you didn't buy the beverage. Maybe it's a cafeteria. Maybe it's a classroom. A lot of us get our news there. The problem is this. If that's the way you're starting with getting your news, you've already started the selection of which ones you're going to read. That My friend is interested in that, so I've got to read that first. My friend's opinion is now coloring the way I read that article. Which one my friend read is probably the one, well, he read this thing in the sun, so maybe I should read the sun. Did you ask him why the sun? Did you say, what are you doing to read the drama sun? <laughs> Shouldn't you? <laughs> if you haven't already asked a friend who's reading that, because it was sitting on the subway beside him, shouldn't you ask him, hold up, why are you reading that tabloid? <laughs> what I'm talking about is it all starts in your daily life right now before you even get into it, it's all really starting with your conversations, with what you're reading, with what you're absorbing, and what you are doing with it. It starts to become real important when within all of those things, one of those things grabs your interest and you say, I don't like that. I need to change that. That one thing. And if you're if you're absorbing your news from a media outlet who's very who's very uh, uh, mission is to make you unhappy and not like just about everything you ever come in contact with. You'll find a cause really quickly. But if that's the sole mission of that media outlet, you might not be very well informed about the issue. You're just mad about it, because that was the only goal. Uh, then you've got to start broadening out and looking for more information on it. And you really owe it to yourself to do the broadening out. You've got to start looking all over the place. And those are the people that the day they find the cause, and start working on that cause. And they walk into working on it really, really more tooled for this fight because they're, because they're gathering their information from so many more places. Those are the people that are probably going to succeed in fighting that cause. Because you're really branching out. You're really talking to everyone. And you're really getting to that point where uh, you can speak about something knowledgeably. Whether you finished high school, whether you finished post-secondary, whether you're even going to post-secondary. We need a city that serves everyone, and anyone can be well informed. I don't have a university degree. I managed a ten billion dollar budget for four years, and I left three hundred and sixty million dollars in a savings account for the mayor. And I don't have a university degree, but I got a lot of information from as broad a, a range of sources as possible, and worked my way. In. For me, it was through through uh, uh, my cause was my children's future. Uh, uh, I would have probably been content to just be a really mouthy North York PTA mom, as long as things were okay for for my two kids. Uh, both of them have special needs. One of them is uh, uh, genetically similarly mouthy, and so that, that could have been a full-time job, just get her through school without being suspended. Uh, but. Certain government changes started to happen in education where I started to realize that both of their futures were threatened. No question about it. So were yours. At the time it was happening, you guys would have been probably just, my kids are a little older than you are now, so you guys probably would have been entering all day school. You would have been getting to grade one, grade two, grade three, and it was dicey. Um, over there is a building, the school board. The proposal was to not even have one. 
We can gripe about the school bar all we want, but imagine if they weren't even there. Your parents hit a brick wall uh, with a principal or a superintendent, and there is no elected public advocate for them to call and say, my kid's not getting a fair deal. That was the proposal. That's how important it was for me to say, uh, to heck with this, I can't continue to just be mouthy at PTAs on the outside. We're going to have to get on the inside and defend the fact that that inside should continue to be there. There ought to be some elected representative participation in this particular level of government. It's considered the lowest. It's actually the most important. That's why in the hall, we don't refer to them as the lowest form of government. We don't call our, our uh, uh, friends over the province a higher order of government. We are orders of government. So we call the others the other orders of government. The school board is similarly a municipal level of government. So we see them as our equals. And your cause could be in any one of those. You start to engage in it and you start to work. The day you start to engage in it, quite frankly, in a cause, from that day on, you're now in that environment with a whole bunch of people who will one day become the people you work with if you're on your way to working in politics. They will be your volunteers if you're going to be in a campaign one day. All of it matters. So now, no matter, no matter how many years away you are from the day you're going to run, you are now interacting <coughs> with the people who will write you a check will march up and down the streets with you, like, like Kristen described, uh, who will come in and work in your office, or may run at the same time as you, but may one day be the mayor and you're the councillor and you need that person to want what you want. So now you've got to be really clear about what you what you stand for, what you want for, for the city or the school system or whatever it is. You've got to start to be crystal clear about who you are. Uh, you've got to start to be careful about um, having loose lips, um, everything that ends up in the newspaper, every picture that is currently on your Facebook page is a problem. I really don't care now what you did on Saturday night, and I'm not going to care if you walk into my door to ask for a job what you did on Saturday night. I'm not going to be impressed by it, but I'm sure as heck going to get on your page to see what it is, because if you are indiscreet about what you're putting on the computer, that could be a problem for me. So everything you're doing now, if you're, if you're working your way into the political world and, and, uh, and thinking about something, everything you're doing now actually adds up to whether or not you're going to have success in that, because it's incredibly public. That's why I said put your hands up, answer the questions. You can't say, I don't want to answer that, we'll just hang back and uh, see how this goes. You don't get to do that in politics. Uh, I'm looking for the staffer who I can read. If you're going to sit there and, and, and dedicate your life to making sure no one can read you, then, then I, I, I don't want you on my team. I don't want somebody on my team that I don't really know what he's in this for. So you've got to get used to being out there, but being real clear about it, and and, 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 and own it down. Um, but because we have to own it down, be, be really crystal clear about it, Sometimes, you get to the point where you think, okay, I think I know exactly who she is, and, uh, and she and I don't relate, and I'm done. That's, that's what the media likes to do. Uh, boil me down to one little piece, and, and then say, you don't have to pay attention to me. Uh, how could you possibly relate to me? Uh, uh, to most media outlets, I am a housewife from Don Mills. I had a silver spoon in my mouth. I actually didn't, but uh, uh, a, uh, uh, and this happens to people sometimes. Your parents struggle most of your childhood, and just when you're leaving home, suddenly your dad finally gets a good job, and now he's doing real well. Never had it. any money. We were paycheck to paycheck until I was finished high school. And then suddenly my dad uh, uh, finds out there's this new uh, restaurant chain some friends of mine are starting up in Canada. It's called McDonald's. But he waited until after we, uh, uh, me and my sisters left home. Now he's rich. Bad timing, Dad. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, really sucked. Really sucked. Uh, but, but lots of people in the industry and in the public affairs, the lobbyists who come in, knew my dad. So they assumed that, that uh, 
I was kicking back for my entire childhood. I was living in a townhouse in Don Mills. We didn't even own a house. We lived in a townhouse. And there, my mother was sewing her clothes. Couldn't go to the store and buy them. There was this place called the Emporium, way, way out Lawrence East, almost to, uh, to Scarborough Hospital. And uh, we would go out there and rummage through clothes that came from God knows where, looking for clothes. That, that was what it was like. So, so I know those neighborhoods. I know, I know a bit about that life. Um, you learn a lot through your kids, too. Um, I have a daughter who is 26. Uh, her uh, her uh, uh, partner is 27. Uh, he's from Ghana. Came at the age of 10. Classic story. His dad came several years before, uh, just after he was born. Uh, kept sending home letters about how well he was doing and, and rolling in dough. Finally, his birth mom sent him to Toronto. Turns out dad's living in an apartment in Regent Park and he has three kids here. And there's really no room for Brian. Like, tough life. He is my son-in-law now and I have three grandchildren. Young parents living in a, in a, in a pretty at-risk neighborhood. Uh, so we're in and, and involved in their struggle. Sometimes things blow up, sometimes things are okay. The three beautiful kids are going through the middle of it. So I have for, you know, first-hand uh, look at all of that. So you take those things and you bring them to work with you. And you put everything <coughs> through all those lenses that you have. That tells me a little bit about what I should be thinking when I get a report about what we might want to do with a recreation center, what we might want to do particularly with the ones in the priority areas, what will we do for the kids of, of this age or that age, how will we intersect in our at-risk neighborhoods with, with what the TDSB is calling model schools. They've got different terminology, but what they're trying to do is address some of the same needs in the same neighborhoods. How can we interface with that and do it well and be, for once, their lives, have decent partners and solve some of those problems? All of those things are intricate lenses that we put every report through that the staff hand us as we're reading it. But you don't get any sense of, if you're just reading one media outlet and, and, and then going about your business, and, and then just letting sort of little bits filter in from TV news, which is all bam, 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 or talk radio that's maybe this, as opposed to this. You get, you get, you get a real superficial thing, unless you really start to engage. If you really start to engage, now you're broader and broadening out the places you go to get the story to the point where it's, this paper said that number, TV station said that number, politician in a, in a radio program said another number. I know. I can get on the website and look it up for myself. You get on that, you get on that, a blog when you get home. Write this down, because if any, if any of you put up your hand to any of those questions, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're missing the boat if you're not reading a very interesting blog. It's called All Fired Up in the Big Smoke. All fired up in the big smoke. Did you know the city of Toronto? That's our very old nickname. You're living in the big smoke. All fired up in the big smoke. The most recent entry, let's just put another one on today. Uh, I don't know if someone who might know is taking a video right now. Um, there's one yesterday that kind of outlines for you that we're talking about what, what, what things we have to cut this year. What's the magic number that we have to, to, to do to balance the budget this year? And right now in the media, there's about six different numbers floating around. But the real number is on the City of Toronto's website. And it's there every damn year. At the end of every budget approval, staff give a presentation. In that last meeting, the one that gets the most press, the one in the council, they, they, they give a presentation. OK, here's the budget. You're voting on it today. And to put it in context, here's next year's outlook. And at the bottom of that presentation is all the things factored in. Sure, here's the remaining pressure. But in the media, you will never see that number through the year when we're talking, because it's never sexy. Because it's just not that bad. It's just not that bad. This year it's 180. You know what's a good number? You know what sounds great? 774 million? Oh my God, 800 million? What's the, if you add a zero, isn't that, wouldn't we be saying billion? Oh my God, how are they going to find a billion? We've never had to find a billion. Not, not, 
not since amalgamation. We've never been close to that number. Every year, yes, there are, there are some mounting expenses, but there are also some mounting revenues. And not all of them come from you. To show that every year, for the last four years, the province has been giving us more money every year and taking back the services that we're still thumping our chests and saying, why do we have to deliver those services? In actual fact, gradually, we're not. <laughs> they're being paid for by the province. But that's being done incrementally, which is not exciting. It's actually solving a problem, which is so not a news story. <laughs> I was solving the problem a story. So media savvy, finding out the facts from the real source, Call Kristen's staff, you'll get the number. Call my staff, you'll get the number. Uh, call the people who are actually creating the number. Then you might want to, then you'd be getting it on the newspaper sites not to read the stories, but to correct the stories. You'd be filling in the comments column. Excuse me, just been on the website. I think you're wrong. Um, and then you're really starting to have the fun in politics. Once you get that far engaged in it, you have the facts in the real places. You're watching how they're manipulating. Now you've got a real conversation when you're in that retail outlet purchasing a beverage of one sort or another. You've got a lot to talk about now. You've got a lot to solve. And every day, whether you're the staffer, um, whether you're the, uh, the campaign manager, or the, uh, the person who runs the office for the politician or the politician, there is no such thing as a long day. Yeah, we work 17-hour days. But how many times a day, Kristen, do you go, it's 5 o'clock? Oh, my God. Uh, counteract that. Well, some of you probably have summer jobs this year. How many of you are having this? Oh, God, is it only 9.30? <laughs> Kill me now. <laughs> Kill me now. Is it only 9.30? Yes. Um, in, on November 3rd, I will have been a counselor for nine years. For nine years, not once, not once have I said, It's never happened. It's always, I have so much more to do, and I want to do it, and I want to do it today. Oh my God, I can't believe it's five o'clock, but you're going to get to a meeting. You get to a meeting. I have to, to uh, speak at 6 30. I don't have time to be nervous about it. I just got to do, this, do the speech. Let's do the speech. Okay, we're done. Okay, I'm going to drive you guys home. Is it really 9 30? We just got there. That's what the days are like. Because everything we're doing is meaningful. Every, imagine if every minute of your day was meaningful. Um, even, even the political staff in the offices, uh, Tyler's done this job at, at, at TDSB at a very young age. We, we've got people of all uh, shapes and sizes and ages uh, doing that job. But they'll tell you, okay, somebody phones and we had to talk about whether or not their next door neighbor's fence was too high. Uh, uh, for, for 20 minutes. And, and, and uh, it was driving me crazy except for this one thing. If the whole time you're spending this time, sure we're talking about events, but what we're really doing is trying to get a person engaged in having some trust that I care about this issue, my boss cares about this issue. If we can solve this issue, now that I've made friends with you, what can you and I also solve together? The six parks that are happening in Kristen's uh, um, work, you need the noise behind you, the citizens behind you to do it. And what seem like mundane calls and come in 100, 200 a day, uh, in actual fact, each one of those is a linkage to forming the group that gets that thing done. So even for our staff, it might be called uh, manager of uh, constituency issues, which is fences and parking pads and trees. But even that flies by and all serves the cause of whatever is your vision for this city. So it's a fabulously exciting thing. But everything you're doing right now is part of getting you there. Just try to keep that in mind when you're sitting at the table with the uh, as yet unnamed beverage. And I used to grab for a little while about that. <laughs>
office. Um, as a youth counselor, um, I'm not sure whether you've heard of some of the booths yet, but you're going to be in the media, you're going to be on our website, your face is going to be there, you are going to be responsible and held accountable um, throughout your two-year term to represent the youth in your ward. And some of your wards, uh, Ward 23 for example, which is this ward here, actually has um, the second amount, uh, the second most amount of youth in Toronto. The, the, the ward with the most is Ward 43. That has the most amount of youth in the city of Toronto. So when you look at all the other wards, um, it's really important that we have a lot of representation, but that you also take your job seriously. Um, this is not something that is just a resume builder. This is not something that is just a high school, yay, I'm on student council, I'm popular. This is something where you're actually going to um, get some work done, uh, work with your city councilor, work with city staff to make a difference in your community, whether that be um, improving uh, parks, whether that be bike lanes, whether that be TTC, whatever your issue is, it's your opportunity. Um, and, and a couple of things that um, 